Bula Minaka, I'm Linda Form, I started Suva. I love listening to Today FM because they play latest music and they rock. Hi, my name is Asinate, I'm from Ba, I love listening to Today FM, Today FM rocks. Bula, I'm a character from Nandi, we love listening to Today FM, here in Nandi it rocks. Hi, I'm Shania, I'm from Lotoka and I love the Today FM and it rocks. Today's hit music on Today FM. In the news tonight, landlords front court for illegal rent increase. Huge gap in ministry service delivery. And more Fijians to serve in the British Army. From the studios of FBC Suva, Jackie Spade. A day after the Consumer Council of Fiji confirmed receiving 470 complaints regarding landlord and tenancy issues, the Fijian Competition and Consumer Commission revealed they're also taking matters to court. FCCC Acting Chief Executive Seneca Vikachuta says this year alone they've filed around 20 illegal rent increase cases which are currently in court. Kritika Kumar reports. The Fijian Competition and Consumer Commission says despite the rent freeze order in place for 11 consecutive years, landlords are still illegally increasing rents. So as far as the FCCC taking action on uh, landlords that are illegally increasing rent, we are doing that as per our provisions of the Act that allows us to do that. FCCC Acting Chief Executive Senika Vika Chuta says currently there is no landlord and tenant legislation. The legislations regarding tenancy issues are quite fragmented. There's several legislations that actually cover it. One of it is the FCCC Act where we look after uh, proper records, tenancy agreement and receipts and illegal rent increase. She adds they also received some complaints from students. However, they have mediated those issues. If we find any breaches as per our act, we do take legal action. So for students that are actually sharing facilities, we have received complaints on that and we have mediated most of those issues. The rent freeze has been extended until the end of this year. Under the freeze, it's important for the landlords to issue proper agreements and accurate receipts to tenants. Kritika Kumar, FBC News. The Ministry of Agriculture's Permanent Secretary David Kolitangane believes there is a huge gap in the ministry's service delivery. Speaking during their Strategic Development Plan and Costed Operational Plan workshop in Nandi today, the PS made it known to the staff that there, was a hu that there were many complaints against the ministry in regards to its services. Philippe Naikaso reports. The system lacks accountability. The vision is clear from the top, and that is to address all inefficiencies within the ministry to achieve its main goal. Effective uh, immediately. Uh, uh, we will have uh, zero tolerance on, on any such complaints that will come to my office. So it's, it's not a threat to the staff. It's an issue that needs to be managed properly, customer complaints, customer issues. Make sure your promise are realistic. That it's, it's as simple as that. You are telling the correct things to, the, to, to your farmers. The staff that were present were also reminded that the ministry is refining its key processes to ensure they deliver plans ultimately with high customer satisfaction. At the end of the day, we. We want to clear and to substantially reduce and eliminate the, the, the level of complaints that are coming against the ministry. It's really affecting our image. The ministry will also need to create an efficient structure that can help them deliver a better quality of service on a timely basis. Just some of the messages I'm speaking from the PS is really driving about um, change. And that's one of the differences in this workshop. It's a honest Assessment. The Agriculture Ministry will also be carrying out a restructure which will assist in enhancing their business functions, work practices and improve services. Philip and Icaso, FBC News. More Fijians will now get a chance to serve in the British Army. This as the British government has opened up a quarter of all bases in the British Armed Forces to the Commonwealth countries including Fiji. Sainiani Boiler reports the online recruitment is currently underway. More than 1,300 Fijians are currently serving in the British Armed Forces, and this number is likely to increase to 2,000. So recruitment has carried on going um, throughout, and it's been done online. 
Um, the last time an actual recruitment mission came to Fiji was in 2007, but the majority of recruitment now is done online. Mother of two, Susanna Wuki, says leaving her daughter will not be easy, but it's all about sacrifice. It's too old for me. <laughs> Registering in the petition was uh, actually for my for my two girls because um, I want a better future for them. 26-year-old Silasa Sovadolu, whose brother is a British Army for 12 years now, says this is what motivated him to join the Army. Uh, it's one of my aim to be part of the British Army, serving in the Army in one day. My elder brother is an uh, ex-British Army, so I want to follow his uh, footsteps. These applicants are currently awaiting for their visa approval to complete their British Army training in the UK. Sainian Boila, FBC News. A matter of alleged fraud involving over $4 million has been transferred to the Suva High Court. It relates to Fiji Revenue and Customs Services Suspended Director Intelligence Compliance and Investigations, Shamim Khan, who was charged with abuse of office and general dishonesty causing a loss. Pranita Prakash reports. Paikek had made an application to transfer the matter to the High Court based on the grounds that it was a serious fraud case and the amount was more than $4 million. However, the defense had objected to the application, saying the magistrate court has the jurisdiction to deal with both counts. The defense also stated that there was a delay by the prosecution to file the transfer application. In her ruling this afternoon, the magistrate said that the first count carries a sentence of 17 years, which is seven years more than the sentencing jurisdiction of a magistrate. She said that it would be appropriate to transfer the matter to the High Court. It's alleged that between January 1, 2016 and May 5 last year in Suva, Khan prepared an investigation report with false contents and prevented the Revenue and Customs from obtaining revenue in the sum of over $4 million. The matter will now be called in the High Court on August 1st. Pranita Prakash, FBC News. The doctor for alleged drug smuggler Justin Ho was today summoned before the Laotoka High Court. This was due to Ho missing at least three court dates as he was admitted in hospital. Dr. Mark Rokumbuli in court today stated that he had attended to Justin Ho a week ago in hospital and that Ho complained of backache and pain down his lower limb. According to Dr. Rokumbuli, he agrees that Ho's situation is such that he needs hospitalization care. He says that the accused is unable to carry himself and needs assistance. The doctor also stated that a medical report was made in relation to this. 28-year-old Justin Ho is charged with attempted unlawful exportation of illicit drugs. The Lautoka High Court judge has also requested that Ho be present for the next court date, which is on the 31st of this month. Up ahead, Gounder Shipping Limited submits petition and hundreds gather to pay last respects for late FLP president. Details after the break. Hi, Bula. I'm Selai from Nandi. I love Gold FM, only the classic hits. Hi, my name is uh, Sotiana here in Bar. We love listening to Gold FM, only the classic hits. Bula, I'm Miri. I'm from Lotoka and I love Gold FM because they play all my classic hits. Hi, my name is Fiona from Tavua and I love listening to Gold FM, only the classic hits. Hi, I'm Ini from Rakiraki. I love Gold FM, only the classic hits. Gold FM, only the classic hits. Poor mooring facilities, poor roads and conflicts between church denominations are affecting shipping services to the Lao group. This was highlighted by the director of Gounder Shipping while submitting his petition to the Standing Committee on Natural Resources to provide reliable, safe and affordable shipping to the Lao Group. Koroi Tandulalo reports. In his submission, George Gounder highlighted the difficulties faced by his crew when they make trips to the Lao Group. He highlighted poor mooring facilities that destroy the marine ecosystem and the lack of jetties. Challenging things out of Lao is the mooring facilities. Now, we lose, I lose about three, four anchors a year, okay? And just imagine a four-ton anchor destroying the, uh, the seabeds. Now, we, we, you know, as, as a stakeholder, I'm, I'm, I'm concerned of what I'm doing to the environment. Now, so the government should play a part 
in providing proper mowing facilities. Gander stressed that conflicts between churches on the islands are affecting their services to the Lao group as well. Going to Vanambalabu, on a Saturday and a Sunday, you got a conflict between two churches there. You got a seven-day and a normal church, which is conflicted. As a businessman, that's, quite a, that's an issue with us now. You know, we, we come in once a month. So they'll restrict us, or you cannot work on Saturday. Then you can work, you only can work on Sunday. Then you got the other group saying, oh, you can't work on Sunday. You can work on Saturday. The standing committee responded that they will raise Gounder's concerns in the September parliamentary sitting. Kuroi Tanulala, FBC News. Major bridges will be replaced during the Lautoka Nandi four-lane project. FRA Chief Executive Jonathan Moore says the project will be carried out in stages as it would be chaotic to do everything at once. Catherine Krishna reports. FRA Chief Executive Jonathan Moore says bridges between Lautoka and Nandi will be replaced first before road work starts. So if you build a new bridge, you want to replace the old bridge, so you've got to put the new bridge in first, as we did in Tamabur. Um, so the initial work on the Nandi four-lane project will be uh, replacement of some of the, uh, the bridges on the route. Moore says critical bridges were identified last year and they will focus on getting those replaced in this financial year. All well, these bridges are due to be replaced in the next 18 months, so over the next 12 months there's going to be major work on bridges. Bessendrua is the major focus in the north. Um, that was moving very badly under the uh, overloading, so we've controlled the overloading until we got the Bailey Bridge in place. FRA says they have plans to build 17 new bridges around the country, five in the central division, seven in the west and four in the north. Catherine Krishna, FBC News. Two Year 9 students will be among the thousands to attend next week's World Scout Jamboree in West Virginia. Both students were nominated to attend the sponsored program held every four years. Josai Nanunga reports. Upon receiving the airline tickets, t-shirts and scarf, Luciana Samwe Mona and Ropate Ratubitu are over the moon at being nominated to attend the 24th World Scout Jamboree. When I come back, I wish to uh, share my experience, on, uh, especially when since uh, USA is a big country, for them to know the same experience that I had during my World Scouts Jamboree. Ratuseru Memorial School student Ropate Ratubitu echoed similar sentiments, saying right now he's excited to be traveling to America for the first time. When I come back, I'm going to share my experience to America to my friends. Teacher Inoke Lindua will accompany the two scouts and says this is a great platform to show the world what Fiji has to offer. And we try to promote our country as much as we can, together with our culture and tradition, and most of all, our faith and also our family. The scouts will fly out tomorrow afternoon and will be away for a period of two weeks. Chosei Nunga, FBC News. The funeral of the late president of the Fiji Labour Party, Lavinia Padarath, was held at the Wesley Church in Suva this morning. In attendance were family members, friends, the Speaker of Parliament, Ratue Peli Nailatikau, colleagues from the Fiji Labour Party, as well as other parties who came to pay their final respects. FLP leader Mahendra Chaudhry, while delivering his eulogy, said Padarath will be remembered for her intolerance to injustice and discrimination. Lavinia was also praised for her involvement in the National Council for Women fighting for gender equality. The nursing fraternity and the Andidakumbao School All Girls also paid their last respects today. Another outstanding member of the nursing fraternity and as president of the party and as an activist, her devotion, her devotion and commitment to labor principles and policy. She stood by the party. And it's business time now with Koroi. Thanks, Jackie. Coming up, Sanjian visa to be available locally. And in growing Fiji, work on Namboalu Town progresses. Stay with us. And I'm from Karavi, and Mirchi FM is hot. Hamachale Nasori se Mirchi FM bojulum.
Hi, I'm Shara Pukash Bhatkata, Tava Me Mirchi FM Sapkinson and Mirchi FM is hot. Hi, my name is Prashant, I live in Suva. I love Mirchi FM because Mirchi FM is hot. Hi, I'm Shane, I love uh, listening to Mirchi FM because it's awesome and it's hot. Hi, I'm Rachel. And I'm Shavi. We, we love, love listening to Mirchi FM in Lambasa. Mirchi FM, it's hot. Fijians will be able to apply for the European Sanjan visa in Suva from September. This comes after more than two years since the French embassy closed its visa section in 2017. Since then, Fiji nationals wishing to travel to Europe have had to incur the additional cost of travel to either Vanuatu, Australia or New Zealand to apply for their visa. French Ambassador Sujoro Sim says this will all change in less than three months with the embassy outsourcing its visa service. It's been my priority since I arrived to uh, re-establish the way for Fijian citizens to apply for visas locally here in Suva. So the uh, scheme we put in place is that we will uh, contract a company, VFS, which will do the visa application process for us here in Suva. It's going to be at the Suva Business Center where already it is possible to apply for visas for Germany or Norway. Sidifa from HFC Bank is up next with the latest from the trading markets. There was a less slack in Australia's labor market in June, as indicated in underutilization. This adds to reasons the Reserve Bank of Australia is likely to leave an interest rate unchanged in August. After 50 basis points of rate cuts in June and July, the Reserve Bank of Australia signaled a pause to assess the impact. Their unemployment rate held steady at 5.2% in June, while a positive surprise was the drop in underutilization, which fell to 13.4% in June from 13.7% in May. The New Zealand dollar has been a major beneficiary of the currency market's recent focus on policy divergence, climbing more than 3% from its June low as the spread between US and New Zealand two-year bond yields has narrowed. The Kiwi may have further room to gain as markets have been trimming bets on Reserve Bank of New Zealand interest rate cuts this year, while increasing them for the Federal Reserve. The U.S. dollar nursed light losses today, weighed down by lower U.S. yields and a rebound in the pound from 27-month lows. Various economic data have given conflicting signs regarding the state of the U.S. economy, but that does not change the bigger picture of the dollar facing downward pressure due to an impending rate cut by the Federal Reserve. That's all from HFC Bank for now. Vinaka. Here are today's exchange rates as set this morning. The Fiji dollar dipped against the Chinese yuan, the US dollar, the Aussie and Kina today, but rose against the New Zealand dollar, the euro and the yen. Looking at commodities, crude oil fell below $57 a barrel. Gold was up at $1,421 per ounce and silver closed up at $16.07 per ounce. In growing Fiji, work on the new number Walu town site in Bua has begun. Local government minister Pramila Kumar said after her tour of the site that the contractors have started developing the land. Kumar, she spoke to market vendors and people in the surrounding area who are concerned with the facilities available for the waiting ferry passengers. On any given day, close to 8,000 passengers arrive and depart from the number Walu Wharf, and the minister says it is important to make the area conducive to them. Mbowalu is an important inter-island transit point. Unfortunately, if you look at Mbowalu, there isn't much. We can't offer much to the passengers. And particularly when there is a delay um, uh, for, the, for the ship to leave. And because of the delay, the passengers are just waiting around. There is no proper shelter, there is no proper uh, toilet facilities, no proper eatery. So the intention is to develop all those facilities. Work on the Nambowalu site will complete by the mid of next year. Meanwhile, work on the Sianganga town site is in the planning stages. Sianganga is the second satellite town being developed by the government in Vonolevu. Because it is at the planning phase, we've just got uh, the EIA terms of reference. So the next step is for, for the Ministry of Local Government. To, to call for a tender and get a consultant on board. The other two satellite towns will be in Kiasi, Navosa and Korovo Tailevu.
That's it from Business Tonight. Sports is up next with Jamie. Thanks, Karoy. And uh, good evening up ahead. Barnes is back with another gold in the bag. And McKee names New Look Squad to take on Maori All Blacks. Details after the break. We love to DFM, to DFM rocks. Bulaminaka, I'm Linda Form, I started Suva. I love listening to Today FM because they play latest music and they rock. Hi, my name is Asnate. I'm from Ba. I love listening to Today FM. Today FM rocks. Bula, I'm Makereta from Nandi. We love listening to Today FM. Here in Nandi, it rocks. Hi, I'm Shania. I'm from Lotoka and I love for Today FM and it rocks. Today's hit music on Today FM. Banube Tambakal Thoro is definitely back. The Pacific Sprint King retaining his 200 meters title at the Games this afternoon to win his second gold medal in Samoa. Akula Dama with this report. It was one of the best Pacific Games 200 meters races, but Banube Tambakal Thoro is truly the Pacific Sprint King after beating Jeremy Dodson in the final. But he says he looks forward to more competition with the USA based athlete. He's, he's been in the game for a long time. And he's somebody that I really look up to. His, uh, both his personal bests in the 100 and 200 are better than mine. So, uh, you know, uh, we have our chat sessions, you know, uh, talk to each other and how we can fix each, other, fix each other's game plans and how we're going to execute our races every day. So, you know, today was just uh, a day where we had to go head to head. And, uh, you know, with uh, the competition I've had from him, I'm really looking forward to the future. And, uh, you know, just meeting him a lot more. Tambakal Thoros coach Mbola Tafo says Mbanuve struck to the race plan all throughout. He ran his race plan. He didn't come away from his race plan. He, the race plan was to attack the first 50, get away from him, make him, make uh, Dodson work in the, in the second 50, kill him in the second 50 and start running away again in the last 50. And he actually did that. And uh, congratulations to him. Dodson just couldn't find the right words to describe Tambakal Thoro and says the Mbau Bullet's return is a success story. Zero training all year and then all of a sudden he jumps out of the pit yeah. and claims the gold. That's a true hometown hero. Yeah, yeah. Tambakal Thoro clocked a time of 20.87 seconds in the 200 meters final, but his personal best is 20.53 seconds. Aquila Dama, FBC Sports. Kelly Nani also won a gold medal at the Pacific Games for Team Fiji this afternoon. Tinai winning the women's heptathlon event. In the first time taking part in heptathlon, Tinai won gold with a total of 3,938 points. The former Andy Dakambao School student from Naivudula in Wainimbuka won three events out of seven. She says she clocked a few personal best times as well in the competition. I feel good, especially uh, winning the, my first gold medal in the first the South Pacific Games. Because uh, last time I came nowhere. So yeah, I feel good and uh, also thank my competitors for giving me a good competition. Yes, I think I'm really good at uh, doing half uh, The Only the javelin and the high jump. I'm good at other events like the short put, the long jump, uh, the 200 and the 100 meter hurdles. Meanwhile, earlier, Team Fiji's one-day gold medal drought at the Pacific Games was broken by shooter Glenn Cable, who beat Samoan Francis Caffarelli. The pair were tied on 98 in the men's individual shooting DTL event, but Cable's experience managed to push him through. Yesterday, Cable had to settle for bronze in the double barrel event. The Pacific Games has brought out the best for one of Team Fiji's uh, para-athletes. Yosef Rakesa is on track to represent Fiji at the Paralympic Games in Tokyo, Japan next year. Akula Dama with the details. Team Fiji Paralympic manager Fred Fatiaki says two of our athletes have a chance to make the trip to Tokyo, Japan next year for the Paralympic Games. Yes, so far we have uh, a couple of athletes. Uh, I would say two so far who are vying for a spot in Tokyo in 2020. Uh, but there's still a lot of work to be done in terms of training, in terms to try and improve on the distance. Uh, as we all know, it's going to the world stage and things will be tougher uh, going down to the, to the 
the World Championships in November. Tiaki says Yosef Orakesa made the qualifying distance in Javelin at the Pacific Games, but he will have to officially qualify at the World Championship in Dubai. For our athletes, uh, for the Javelin F41, we have uh, one athlete who is uh, reaching the qualifying standards and uh, he won a bronze medal in the Games here in Samoa, uh, in the Javelin men. Uh, it's uh, easier for Rakesa. CV Games bronze medalist Rakesa is looking forward to the world meet in November. I'm happy with my performance, but when I go to the world championship, I'll do my best to make my country proud. And I also want to thank my family in Fiji for their support. This is also Rakesa's first Pacific Games, and he hopes to represent Fiji at the Paralympic Games next year. Aquila Dama, FBC Sports. Fiji women's football coach Marika Rondo acknowledged Tonga's effort today in their last pool match. Fiji defeated Tonga three goals to one with goals to Thema Nassau, Annette Nainima and Chotivini Tambua. Rondo was a bit worried about the inconsistency late in the match, but says Fiji will have to lift its game in the middle playoff on Saturday. I uh, came in for last fight at the uh, bronze uh, medal playoff. So Tonga was equally had a, had a chance to make it to the bronze playoff. So when I look at it, it's, uh, it was going to be tough. I anticipated it to be tough. Uh, the ground condition didn't help, but uh, uh, we maintain our cool and start to work the, the ball in the early stages of the game to score two early goals. But at the same time, we took our foot off the accelerator and then uh, we went off to sleep a bit. And uh, this is uh, the inconsistency that we don't want uh, to appear in, the, in our game. So. So far, so good. Uh, we're waiting for a medal playoff uh, on Saturday. Fiji's three-on-three uh, -three women's basketball team is still trying to adapt to the rules of the competition at the Pacific Games. This is the first time the shorter version of the game is being played at the regional meet. Fiji, the Fiji team is made up of players from the five-a-side team that won silver yesterday. Fiji defeated Marshall Islands in their first match today, 21-5. However, Captain Michaela Mendez says they haven't fully adapted to the rules. A lot of us are still getting used to the rules. All of us, I believe, with the exception of Mili, I think this is our first time playing three on three. So just being able to, you know, quickly adapt to the rules, you know, like someone scores, you, the other team takes it out. So it's just getting used to that. I think, uh, you know, we never settle for any performance that we have from every game. We look to build on, you know, what we didn't do well, prep for the next game. We're not underestimating any team whatsoever here. So I think we're just working on us as a team, getting better, you know, getting defensive stops, being able able to communicate since this is more a more faster paced game so just trying to be able to gel well together and i join aquila dama live from apia and Samoa for the pacific games aquila how's team pg doing just two more days uh, to go now before we uh, bring the curtains down for the uh, 16th pacific games out here in apia Samoa, jamie and after day 10 fiji am um, uh, have a total of 26 gold, 33 silver, and 40 bronze medals. Well, uh, we started day 10 with um, uh, 23 gold, but we won three more gold medals today um, uh, through Elena Nitinai, Banuve, uh, Tamba Kauthor, and of course, Glenn Cable in uh, shooting. So uh, our medal um, tally as of now is 26 gold, 33 silver, and uh, 40 bronze. And uh, also at the moment, the um, men's football side is playing uh, Solomon Islands at the moment. But looking um, at tomorrow's uh, schedule as well, we'll have the 4x100 uh, meters relay finals tomorrow. And of course, the men's uh, triple jumps as well. And uh, the uh, men's long jump plus uh, William Fall, who was on, um, out of uh, medal contention today in the uh, man's discus well he will be in action tomorrow in man's uh, shot put where he will um, uh, try to uh, win a medal as well for team fiji powerlifting is uh, happening tomorrow as well along with uh, squash and uh, shooting as well where glenn cable is um, uh, expected to continue his fine form where he has collected one gold and uh, one bronze for team fiji so far in shooting well um, uh, that's rugby the men's um, the men's and women's teams uh, rather the mixed team will play again tomorrow and of course, we continue tomorrow with uh, the men's and women's three by three uh, basketball, Jamie. Thanks, Aquila. Now, the Flying Fijians head coach John McKee has made 10 changes to his run on side, which defeated the Maori All Blacks 27 to 10 at Suva's Ends at Stadium last weekend. 
McKee says it's always the intention across these two matches to give players in the squad an opportunity and game time in the lead up to the Pacific Nations Cup. He adds with the new look side, they expect a different set of challenges against the Maori All Blacks this time around. Fiji Pearls registered their second win in the Netball World Cup last night, beating Sri Lanka 59-44. Today's play of the day comes from the AFL with a brilliant goal by the Brisbane Lions against Port Adelaide in their 48-point win. And that's it from Sports Tonight. Later on in the world of the weird and wonderful, meet an 11-year-old four-time log-rolling world champion. Details coming up. My name is Neha and I'm from Kadavi and Mirchi FM is hot. Hama chale na sorry se Mirchi FM bo julum. Hi, I'm Sharon Shari Pukash baat kata hai aur tawa mein Mirchi FM sab kuch hai and Mirchi FM is hot. Hi, my name is Prashant. I live in Suva. I love Mirchi FM because Mirchi FM is hot. Hi, I'm Shane. I love uh, listening Mirchi FM because it's awesome and it's hot. Hi, I'm Rachel and I'm Shavi. We, we love listening to Mirchi FM in Lambasa. Mirchi FM. It's hot. In your media tonight, do you want to scan your hotel bed sheets and see if you are sleeping on clean or dirty linen? It's that time now. Angie joins us with weather. Hello there and welcome to the weather world. Tables have turned around for the central division. Rain has entered our sunny picture and it will stick around for a bit longer. Just the thing we didn't expect but unfortunately. Now moving on to the other centers in the west. It had more sunshine, it looks wonderful and feels warm. There is light showers and lots of cloudy periods in the prediction. Eastwards from Pak Haba to Suva, rain and more rain and there is more for us later tonight. And up north, hazy sunshine with rain clouds circulating, brief showers expected to pass. At sea, southeast winds 15 to 20 knots, moderate to rough seas. For the tides, low tide at 1.51am with high tide at 7.58am, sunrise at 637 For tomorrow, it's a Friday, lovely day. Other centres will be fine except for Navua, Suva and no sorry. Tomorrow's temps, Lotoka will be warm at 32 degrees. And looking further on to Saturday, much cooler weather is predicted. And that's all from the FBC Weather World. Jackie. Thanks so much for that, Angie. In our Fiji Impulse segment tonight, we asked, does Fiji need rehab centres in light of hard drug cases in Fiji? I think there should be more uh, rehab centers in the country and not just in Suva, maybe in other divisions as well, uh, considering the drug cases that we've had in the previous days and weeks and a lot of drug cases before the courts. There should be more rehab centers to get people back in track. No, I think uh, the problem should be solved at home. Everything should be done back at home. Rehab building, all will be full and uh, people addicted will still left over outside. The only solution to that incident is God. In the world of the weird and the wonderful, 11-year-old Libby Magnan is a four-time log rolling world champion. She can kick, walk and hula hoop on logs as narrow as 11 inches in diameter, sometimes for more than an hour. She hopes that one day log rolling will become mainstream and she'll inspire other children to try it. Recapping the main stories for tonight, landlords front court for illegal rent increase, huge gap in ministry service delivery, and more Fijians to serve in the British Army. For these stories and others, tune in daily to our sister radio station, Gold FM. To our poll question this week, we're asking, has John McKee found the best players and combinations for the World Cup? Visit our FBC website to answer. Tonight, our heartache, as we here at FBC, have lost a valuable member of our family. Guthurui host Malakai Ngangavava is no more. He passed away this morning, which has left us all shocked. One of our best at doing what he did best, 
Kangadhava will not only be missed by us, but everyone who knew this vibrant man. We will miss you dearly, Mala. Heaven has truly gained another angel. I'm so numb, I can't feel anymore. I'm praying you just walk back through that door. And ah, so there will be another angel around the throne tonight. Your love lives on inside of me, and I will hold on tight. It's not my place. Radio Fiji One, Nandomo Iviti.